election and uh, the election and uh, and uh, that uh, disastrous uh, uh, government uh, that doesn't seem to be able to to really uh, focus on what is significant towards uh, solving uh, problems uh, wearing a mask or not uh, is ideological and it's uh, shocking for a country um, like America and artists are suffering everything is still close musicians can't really play uh, and it's a very very devastating a time but as we always say it's a time to reflect a time to think and um, it is a time where we uh, um, can reflect on the essential what really is of uh, significance of importance and perhaps also reinvent uh, create new forms because new times need new theater and new forms of theater as Brecht said and this certainly is a time something seems to be shifting under our feet and we have to find out we are too close but artists can and after four months of talking to um, uh, artists from all around the world. We are now opening it also up to thinkers, philosophers, producers, directors, curators. And um, today, which is a special day for us because uh, it is our 100th Siegel talk. So uh, uh, it's uh, even we are stunned, you know, this is a third of the year. Uh, uh, how is that possible? But it is true, we counted it. Um, and today we have with us a, a great worker in the field uh, of theater, in the vineyard of theater, as Tom Walker said, who was here with the Living Theater. Uh, Handan Özbilgin is here with us, uh, um, is someone who is doing a very good work, significant work, important work, somehow slightly out of the limelight of the big stage, but still the light reaches it, or what she does reaches the other ones, but uh, she was uh, raised and born in Ankara, in Turkey, and she is an independent theater director, producer, and an associate director of the LaGuardia Performing um, Arts Center at the LaGuardia Community College. And she uh, has uh, been served as an affiliate artist at the LARC, as well as New George's. And she is also a member of the great Lincoln Center's Director's Lab that Catania created. And it's stunning how many people have went there. The so people who have come to our Siegel, also in our talks, almost like the Royal Court International Writing Program and the Lincoln Center's Director's Lab seem to be doing something right. And also over a long, um, long time. She's part of Theater Without Borders, uh, Atelier for Young Managers, and uh, part of the Emerging Leadership Institute. She has received TCG's On the Road grant, which is a great confirmation. Mm -hmm. Not that the grant is so big, but getting it means you're doing good work. It's not so easy uh, and it should be much, much better funded, but everybody can do just uh, so much. And, um, and she just recently co-founded Identity Crisis Theater Company with English translations of work from Turkey, her native country, as well as the Balkans, Middle East and the Mediterranean. This is what she's focusing on at the moment, Handan. So where are you? Are you in Ankara? Oh, no, I'm in New York. I wish I was in Ankara. I'm in New York. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I am, I am just kidding. So tell us a little bit, uh, what's going on um, at LaGuardia? Lot happening. So uh, we launched our first virtual theater festival called MENA Theater Festival. MENA is, stands for Middle Eastern North African Theater Festival. So we began Monday, October 12th, and it's gonna run October until the end of October 17th. So every day we have a couple of events. After conversation with you, I will have three events uh, to join, to listen. So we were very busy with that. Well, it, yeah. mm -hmm. Tell us a, a bit about it. I mean, there's a lot to do. Yes. There are um, many possibilities. You are doing this very big theaters, big, big ones are not showing their flags at the moment. Of course, Broadway theaters are seems to be invisible, but also others are, um, but some places like yours, which over the years or decades have really supported communities as continuing work under difficult circumstances. Why do you feel this is important that you said, I'm gonna create this festival now? Uh, so at LaGuardia for throughout the years, uh, I was creating this festival called Rough Draft Festival. Yes. We always nurture artists, emerging artists, uh, mid-career artists, and there was no... Uh, so you could be experimental artists, you could be, you know, a traditional form of writing, you could be a director, playwright. We gave platform to artists. 
to create and time to create. So Raft Raft was my passion and it's still my passion to give, give, I think artists needs time to create. So Raft Raft was about that. It's not about the product, but it's about the process. So throughout the years, I have been working on that festival. And a few years. Um, it started, Raft Raft started actually 2007. Uh, I was a part-time employee at Alpec, LaGuardia Performing Arts Center. And a few years later, I became full-time. So I will say 2007, but last few years, it just found its voice. Just basically from the name you can, from the title, it is rough. So people just put their idea out there and they experiment with it. And it's very important, I think, for artists to have that time and space to create. So Raft Raft was important to me and I didn't wanna uh, say, oh, this is just for Middle Eastern artists or European or Turkish, it is for everybody. Uh, so pandemic happened in March and it was the beginning of Raft Raft Festival and we didn't know anything about the pandemic. We knew it was bad. Uh, we didn't even know we had to put a mask on, but uh, Raft Raft was about to open. So I was just like saying, oh, please let me open. I work so hard on it, please let me open. So we opened the Raft Raft Festival. We had the opening night and afterwards everything shut down. So, um, and what happened during that time, of course, March, April for everybody, not just for me, but for I think everybody in New York, it was, we were the hot spot, and it was very surreal, horrifying time. And during that time, um, I felt that I am in a privileged position because I have my job at CUNY. We have our spaces. I can still afford to do stuff. And, and with that, of course, Raft Raft is something I will continue to do in a physical space. But with that, I was thinking I got to do more now than ever because I don't know what's going to happen next year. I, do I have the job? Do I have the platform? So what with that idea, uh, Mina, uh, Middle Eastern, North African uh, community I have in New York, I say, I got to do something about the, I, part of my identity is Middle Eastern. Not the whole, but part of it. I say, I have to do something about this community because they have been giving me a lot and I think it's underrepresented. So I say, this is about the time that we have to give more to people we were presenting throughout the years. So that came with that. It's part personal reasons and political reasons that I really wanted to do this festival. Of course, we are, I'm, it's not just me, uh, my managing director, Stephen Heath, and the group of people at LaGuardia say, let's do it. Let's, let's start a season with, with, with this and just do this festival. So it was just like, a, understanding the urgency that this might be the last, I am, I am approaching everything as if it's the last time. So I got to do this for the community, for the underrepresented. So that is the whole idea behind the festival. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I think one of the great uh, missions of theater this time we live in is to represent the underrepresented who are, or if they are represented, they're even represented by someone else and not by themselves. Um, yeah. Big theaters, you know, um, who should do even, you know, the off-Broadway, they function as off-Broadway houses, but at the roundabout or signature or others. Um, um, one, even perhaps, you know, part of what comes out of a, a Lincoln Center, it is uh, next to the great director's lab, perhaps not visible on, on, um, on, on the stages and uh, fully. So, um, and um, and uh, I think, how does it how come that you that you do that uh, uh, in a small space with very little resources? Um, what was it your personal experience uh, that you felt I have to uh, um, be a voice, a megaphone, uh, um, or is it uh, um, part of the mission of your center? It's a part of our mission uh, because Lagardia Performing Arts Center. We are located in Long Island City which is the most diverse community in New York, maybe in the world. So uh, we have to present that student body. 
And that has been always the mission of like, if you do casting for a play with students, it's so hard to find a white actor. So it's easier to find. So it's extremely diverse. So it's, it's harder to find a white actor uh, than a play. So we have to go out and find a white actor. This is very unusual. Very New York. So that is our student body. This is our population. So tell us a little bit about the composition of it, uh, your student body, which represents New York, where white people basically are in a minority right now. Minority is all minority, and uh, there are numbers. If you go to, I, I, I won't be able to tell the numbers, but this is like sixty or more countries represented. I mean, has been the student is the student at Lagardia. So uh, it's extremely diverse. You see when you walk inside the college, it's just the United Nations or, or even bigger than United Nations. So we have been, of course, I have been part of that, that community and myself coming from Turkey and being an immigrant. And it's very interesting to me, I should put it out there. I, I never found, say to myself, oh, I am an immigrant and I have this mission to fulfill. But since the election 2016 or my position here, I say, I am the immigrant. I am the underrepresented and I got to do this. I have the ownership of who I am, my identity, along with the identity of the, the college and my job. So we are, uh, that's, we are completely dedicated to the, the, the minority groups and just having their voice on our platforms. But it's a personal mission as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it is really uh, uh, of importance to really represent the world as it is, to see the world uh, uh, as it's we see it with our eyes, and it is not represented uh, on the stage. And uh, it's, if you go to the big theaters, big places, uh, the houses, uh, it is uh, not there. And part, of course, of the mission. Uh, what we think of theater is to um, give space. Someone said it funny, you know, the uh, theater is, you know, done for white audiences, by white writers, by white directors, because that's what you think. It's the norm. It's the rules. These are the rules of the game. And we're going to talk uh, with Florian Malzaha, um, you know, who wrote a book about this, you know, that the games, the theater perhaps should look be at a game and it's, uh, but the rules um, are changing. And someone said the uh, the over uh, privileged but underpigmented people, you know, are ruling. You know, even in New York, you walk around, you see the red light, the sign is a white man walking. Nobody, I, I always, I'm stunned by it. It's very true. You're up, it's green, you know. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's a white man walking. And what does that mean? And, um, and um, luckily it's not a red sign and a woman has to wait, but uh, it's, what's the big difference, you know, in, 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 in that world? So what is the idea? Who can represent these communities? Tell us a bit. What is your idea? What are your politics about representation? Uh, first of all, you got to give time and space to people for the presentation. Any artist across the board, you need. So I think it's secure place, the place that people feel like, OK, I am not forced to produce or I am not afraid to talk. There's no censorship. There is no uh, boundaries with what you want to do. Of course, don't forget in the physical space, we are on the college campus and there are rules to that. But what I'm talking about the idea, so it's I think safe space for artists to create and making sure that like when uh, I was putting together MENA festival, uh, reaching out to people who can give you feedback or uh, help you to make it better. So it's not just your vision, but helping you to put this together with people who has expertise on the field or knows that all of a sudden you start thinking, I say, okay, I have an Iraqi playwright, but how about should I go to, you know, uh, Palestine? So you start thinking and putting the pieces together. So you have to make sure I think when you put a festival that you are fair, you do your research and you make it about a team, not just about yourself. That's what I have been finding out more about Mina. And it's very humbling experience in the sense that like I'm learning from it. I'm inspired by everyone who's there. But uh, I think I'm learning to also be an activist more. Like it's not just about the play reading, but it's more about the conversation. Like how we are, I think it's extremely crucial to put the ideas out there. So you have a conversation 
with every presentation, right? Uh, yes, we do. Some of them is uh, longer. Like you will have a conversation with, uh, let me say. Abhishek? Abhishek Majundar, uh, he's from India. When I say people from certain countries, actually they are everywhere. They are very global right now, but he's, I think, born and raised in India, but now. So for instance, you will have a, you will moderate the conversation. He's a playwright. And after about conversations is longer, what I mean by like half an hour to 45 minutes, and then reading an excerpt from his play. But also we have shorter ones, like 15 minutes, just to say hello, who they are, our website has all the things. But yes, I think conversation, and thank you for your program, it's very important to hear people talking. Are you really, I mean, since Monday, I'm taking notes what people say, playwrights, um, administrative people, like the producer, I say, wow, I am so inspired by it, let me go search more. So I, I find the value in that is so much. And I want Mina to be that platform too. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing it now for over 10 years. Is that connected to the community in your, in your, uh, of your place in Queens where you are? Do you have an audience? Do people come or is it uh, the university? Is it happening inside the university more? Inside the university, we always try to include uh, faculty or uh, students to anything we do. I mean, if you have a play, we make sure that um, they, are, they are included as actors or, uh, you know, assistant directors. Uh, but the, for the, also for LaGuardia Performing Arts Center, our employees are alumni, like they are students who's working for us. I would say 50% of our uh, crew are students. Uh, but for MENA Festival, because now we are in, not in a physical space, it's much harder to reach the community. Like you don't talk to someone in the corridor and say, oh, we, have, we are doing this or the posters. But we have a student group uh, called Unheard Voices formed by CUNY students, mostly LaGuardia. Uh, they are reading the excerpts from international plays. So they are very much involved uh, with, the, with the whole process from casting to the reading. Uh, and I will, I'll, I will tell her Una Bahara, she's the lead of that group, leader of that group. And she, she's so good, she's the producer. So I am including the community in that sense, like students are involved with Mina. And also, of course, we are always inviting anyone in the college to come and join. We have a faculty member, uh, moderating a conversation. So yes, the community- Whenever I came also to the Rough Draft Festival, you had quite an audience, you know, also people from neighborhoods um, who, who come, came in. So uh, Handan, why, why are you doing this? Why do you believe uh, theater is of significance at a university or in your community? I think we have privileges. First of all, I never have to worry about, I have a, I, I, I get paid. I have a salary, like a full-time faculty. So I'm not, never worry about, I have to fundraise for a production. So that is amazing. So we have also, before the pandemic, we have physical spaces. I mean, we have two theaters at LaGuardia that that is amazing. Space in New York, if you are not in New York, space is everything. So we have two theaters, we have uh, money, uh, I'm not talking about big budget. I'm not talking about one million dollar. But we have we have op and we have a crew of we have a group of people who can who can put things together. So why not use that to create art? Art is that's all we need. So yes, I think since the day I start working because I'm a director, I came to the space. I was a part time employee. I said, Wow, we have a space here. You gotta use that space. This cannot be empty. You gotta use this like 24 hours. And thankfully, uh, LaGuardia Community College is very, very, has been very supportive to us. So yeah, that's the reason because I, I have everything that I should be doing this. Why not? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think in New York City, your festival has a track record. It's one of the very, very few places 
that really gives space for readings, for development, for process, and um, and to, to to nurture also artists. I always get you know emails before they say, "Come here, I do this. I'm directing this." And so um, so it is. Um, it, and I feel often it is not really taken as serious um, as it should be. It's an enormous contribution. But my question was not also just for like what occurs. Why do you think? What is the impact of theater and art for real? Why do you think we? It's a tremendous work you do. What? Why do you do it? What is the result? What? What is the reason? What is the meaning of it? I think, yeah. Uh, someone has to do this. We have to give space. And for me, you need, you need time. You need space to grow and art is a special needs that more. And for me, I put myself always in the position of the artist, even though I'm producing, that it's not about the fame, it's not about the product, it's not about the money, but just to see the idea coming together in front of you or the implications, implications that what that can be in the future is extremely fulfilling for me as a person. I, and I think it's essential because nobody gives that room to grow. As a student, uh, like, oh, okay, so you gotta be good at something, but sometimes it's time to get the things right. And that time to me is essential. And I'm very grateful that with, that, with the Lagardia, I was able to do that one. So I hope I'm answering your question, but it's a very yeah. personal thing. I, I really believe in growth and time and uh, and also risk taking. I should say risk taking. You gotta put it out there. You gotta. And I always tell this to rough draft artists if they feel like, oh, I am in the midst of it. I don't want to present it. No, I, that's the time you should really letting yourself to be vulnerable and and opening the opening the dialogue. And I saw I witnessed sometimes like people see. Let's say you hear a reading. And afterwards, you see the reading on stage, which is like rough draft. You see the rough copy. And you start talking about, oh, I remember this actor. He was doing that in reading. Now it changed. So all of a sudden, it becomes the about the work. So you are attached to it. So you grow with it. It's not just the artist grows with it. Audience grows with it. And I truly believe in that. I believe it's a very, very slow process. But I think in the long, long term, it pays off. You get one person to dedicate it to seeing the process. That one person means one million in maybe fifty years. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, how do you select the artists? What is important to you of what you present? Uh, for Raf Raf. Uh, there was no criteria. There was no criteria at all in terms of the style of the work. So it can be site specific. It can be um, uh, how do you, like well written play. It can be interpretation of Shakespeare, Macbeth. So there's there was no limit to it. But I think to me the most important thing, the artists when they apply for it, they have to understand where they are with the piece and what do they want to accomplish during Raft Raft, which means they say, I wrote this piece, but I'm questioning dance, uh, using dance for a minute. I really want to explore during the Raft Raft if dance works or I want to make scene one better. So I am focusing on if they exactly know what they have to improve. That's very important. They know what they want to do with the piece. Because when they go in, they have a limited time. They have 20 hours and they have a couple of performances. They have to know exactly what they're aiming, what they want to accomplish. That's very crucial, I think, for artists. Mm -hmm. okay. And they have to build a little bit more in New York. Like, it's not something, oh, I wrote a play yesterday, I'm gonna put it on. Their resume, their hard work, their survival in this crazy scene is crucial too, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the artists you, who you work with. Where do they come from and what do they write about? What are things we don't see or hear on other stages? Uh, I mean, 
for MENA artists, uh, I will give an example because uh, also it's, she was also part of Rafter Sanaz Gajari. I mean, she broke I, the last name. I'm gonna Sanaz I, Gajari. So I will talk about her a little bit. She was a Rafter of artist. Um, she was working on a piece called Red Wednesday in Rafter Raff. And uh, it was about five years ago, I will say. So for instance, Red Wednesday was about her personal experience uh during the uh her her uncles her family uh, uncles uh, experience in iran the revolution in iran so the piece is about that so she worked on that piece uh, at raft raft it was first a script like you know rough script and she put it on the stage and later on we brought her back to work more. So we saw a production. So two, three years she worked on that piece and you see with Sanaz how much is improved with that. And it's called Red Wednesday. It's based on a real life experience. But what was so fascinating to me, every time she's searching something, she's in it, she's finding new angles because she keeps seeing on stage in front of the audience, Okay, I gotta work on this angle. I gotta work on this uh, um, design factor. So it was improving in front of us and uh, two years. I think she worked on it with us two years, but now she's part of um, Mina Festival. She's working on a new piece. It's called Iranian Girl. She wrote it. Uh, one woman show, she's gonna work on that. So there are so many pieces, I'm just coming up with Sanaz because I've been talking to her this morning, but yes, there are so many artists like Sanaz uh, working on a piece and it gets better and better each time. Uh, one other example, I'm gonna give it to you, American Dreams right now, it is online, it's, it's, uh, it's a virtual, uh, it's virtually happening, Leila Bak, uh, yeah. Tamila Woodard was behind of it. So American Dreams was part of Raft Draft a couple of years ago, 2016, I would say. Uh, so it was just an idea. Leila and Tamila wanted to do something. I said, we have this idea, American Dreams. Now American Dreams are a full production, went to Cleveland Public Theater. Now is all over and it's just gain momentum, they found the voice for it. And it was, but during the rough draft, they were experimenting with the idea. So, and it's still going on right now. I have to watch what they are doing, but yeah, two years from now, mm -hmm. they built that and they are still building and now it's a full production. Mm -hmm. in, in those 10 years of really working with, uh, you know, um, 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 stories from, uh, writers from around the world, from immigrant uh, families. I mean, there was Marcy Arlen had the great immigrant theater yeah. project. I think you in a way uh, took that over. Of course, we have also the play company, you know, that's dedicated to productions of international work. We have our uh, Penville Voices Festival, but I think you're, you're thinking very special. We've got so many artists who you give space and place to. So what are your rules? What did you find out? Um, let's say, can a white actor represent uh, Arab? Uh, uh, a character uh, can who represents who uh, is it has the director be from the country where they are from how do you deal with languages what did you find what did you experience where you say this worked and also what does not work where uh, i'll give an example of mina because it's just recent so we are reading the excerpt uh, from the plays, international playwrights. One of them was She, He, Me by Amal Rafael Kori. So it is about uh, two transgender characters in the play and, uh, and one other uh, gay character. So for the, it's an excerpt, but the mission of the festival to make sure that students read that those parts. So it was almost impossible to find a transgender student who will read for 40 years old character. So that's right now is you are at the decision of, do I go outside, find a transgender, which will be the right thing to do. Of course, those experiences should be told by people who's transgender. But with that particular one, we went outside, we found a Middle Eastern actor to read the transgender uh, from male to female, 
for the role. But what happened is that, uh, and student, the other two students read the part, but it, it was they none of them was transsexual or gay, but the actor who read the trans part was uh, from Middle East and the character has to be Middle Eastern. So she gave something about being Middle Eastern to the part like Middle Eastern mom. So she knew the attitude, she knew the accent. So yes, we missed the transgender part, but we won something. We gave the authenticity to the character. Uh, so with that example, it felt very honest. It felt real. It, I had no problem or the incident had problem, but in terms of directing, in terms if you had a time, energy and production, you gotta, if you are doing a play about Middle East, you gotta know about it. I don't think a white, someone white male should be doing a play about the female body. So that's, I, I'm a true believer of that. Like you gotta uh, have the right casting and right director for it. But for this particular incident, it worked for this excerpt because it was a short time, it felt real. But yes, I'm a true believer of people has to, uh, female, if you are talking about female body, I think it needs to be directed by a female. No question in my mind about that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm being much more aware of that now than before, actually. Mm. Um, has the Black Lives Matter movement, has that had an impact on your work, your thinking, or the students, um, or future work? Absolutely. I mean, Black, I was teaching uh, last semester uh, when the movement was happening. And uh, then I, it was virtual, of course, I was teaching online. And the first 15 minutes of our class was, oh, I went to protest, I was doing that. It was, I think it was amazing. It was, uh, it is amazing. So uh, yes, it was very much part of our conversation, daily conversation, and also daily activities uh, for, some, for some of us. For Black Lives Matter, uh, we really want to do a Black Lives a festival dedicated to Black Lives Matter, which will be probably in February. But again, we have to find the right person to do the creation of the festival. I am not the right person for it. For Mina, yes, but so we will do a festival about it. Um, for students, when uh, we are doing Gaza monologues, uh, this is um, it's about the war in Palestine. And the kids who is doing the monologues, of course, don't know anything about Gaza or the war. But I keep telling them, you know, this kid is like when we rehearse, I tell them the kids is frustrated because just like Black Lives Matter, they want to change the world. They want something better. So that's my communication with students, too. I'm using pandemic, Black Lives Matter, what's happening in America to communicate something international or universal, because I think that's all the same at then. So yes, it's very, very, very inspiring and influential Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. So basically all your students, everybody was involved, went out. Most of them for sure. Some of them were shy to talk about it, but whoever was out there, oh, we walk for hours, we protested today. And uh, some people came to class with Black Lives Matter t-shirts and, and that, that's also the faculty members and us, like, what can we do? What can we do? Should we, and we need a platform for it to talk about it. And we are focusing February for that, to, to make it happen. But again, I, I know lots of MENA playwrights. Um, I have a good network, but for African-American community, I need someone to help us with that. Hmm. So that's what we are gonna build. So. Yeah, so will be that a result coming out of exactly so it will be better result i would say mm. so how do you feel as, as someone from turkey as someone from officially i think it's even it's even west asia in the united nation uh, yeah. uh, category of it how do you feel uh, being in um, the us in new york how was your journey for you uh the journey for me so I got a scholarship to study in US uh, and they asked me, there was an interview process. So they say, what do you wanna do when you go to New York? 
and I say, uh, I want to start uh, postmodernism. I want to study postmodernism, right? So I came here. So when I came here, I was a brief lead student at Kuni Graduate Center, very briefly. But everybody's asking me about Turkish traditional theater. They are talking about puppets. They are talking about all these forms, Turkish, uh, Turkish theater, the traditional forms. So I say, wow, I'm here to learn about uh, postmodernism. So you're asking me. So that was amazing to me to that how much my identity, where I came from is important, as important as the new, new the territories that I'm gonna learn. So I, I, everything I learned in Turkey, I graduated from a wonderful, wonderful college in Ankara, uh, Diltari Teatro, Theatre, Diltari Teatro, uh, I'm trying to say it in Turkish, anyways, in Ankara University. So everything I learned came back to me. I was saying, oh, I got to remember what I learned about Turkish theater, what, what it meant to be that. So that was great for me to, to build something new in America, but also going back to who I was and bring both together. In New York, um, and with that, so what I found in New York, everybody wants to put you in a category. They say, oh, you're Middle Eastern. No. You are mid so I'm saying I'm everything. I am European, I am Middle Eastern, I am Mediterranean, I am me. So that categorization is something I really forcefully say, no, like I, I am me. But throughout the years, the years past, I say, no, I am that, I'm that, I'm that. So my experience in New York, is I was, I never went through discrimination or I never felt I was always encouraged to do what I, I, I could do. But of course, I'm finding more about what means to be other to in a different perspective. It's, it's I'm still, I'm still trying to sort out and articulate what I mean. But is that uh, I embrace all side of me as a Turkish person, which is Middle Eastern, European, Mediterranean. So I am welcoming all and I'm embracing all rather than saying that defending myself for it. So that's where I am with, with it, for sure. <clears throat> and how is it to be between those two, somehow between those two countries to keep them together in the mind also, which what's happening with Erdogan in Turkey or Trump in the US? How do you, how, how do you see these worlds? Oh, the, um, I mean, Erdogan is the, as as many people will know, is the president uh, of uh, Turkey, and now we have Donald Trump. So uh, it's not good. These 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 far right leadership is not working in Turkey. It hasn't been working for twenty years or more. So there's a sense heavy censorship in Turkey and. Now it's very unfortunate in America, we are seeing those um, tendencies happening towards the directions of autocracy. And uh, so um, I had this great conversation with a playwright, Ebru Nihan Chalkan yesterday. And she said that, uh, yes, there is, there is hardship in Turkey. There's a censorship. There's so many bad things happening, just like America. But there are so many good things happening in Turkey, too. And artists is thrive there, too. And, and Turkey is divided right now. 50 percentage for Erdogan, 54 for the liberal, you know, uh, liberal uh, and democracy, for the democracy. So, uh, so we are in a divided country in Turkey, we are in divided country in America. So I see lots of resemblances in both countries and I feel trapped in both. So I cannot say, oh, I'll go back to Turkey. Now I can run away from Trump. I don't wanna go back to Turkey. I don't wanna stay here. So, but yeah, so I think it's scary times, scary times. But there are good things happening in both in Turkey and here too. So I should, I, I, I'll try to stay positive looking at the good things happening in both countries. Mm. So what do you detect over those 10 years of plays, artists you work with, and are there things you pick up? Yeah. Is theater becoming more towards the political, uh, towards some activism, do, or do you feel uh, 
no, it's a, it's more about a family structures, playwrights, relationships that often people do say that New York plays, a lot of them by writers are about small worlds, um, but very well done, of course, psychologically motivated. Um, so, but what's your, do you see changes? What do you pick up? You have your ears so close, you pick things that people suggest to you. What do you, what do you see? I think it's people, I think all the theater artists I have been working, I am working, I think, we are now all activists. I think that I cannot separate theater from the activism. There is, that is, I used to say my choices, my daily life is a political, right? Everything I do is political. Like my hair is political. But now I say, no, 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 we got to underline the things now. Like I feel like we need to say it uh, articulated before maybe it was just oh what I do is shows it no you got to talk about it too so I think I feel like more and more people are activists openly talking about rights of the minorities uh, underprivileged and that is to me me as a person I feel like that I feel like oh we got to do a revolution now we got to talk it now so I am not being oh okay, we'll do art and it shows it. No, let's talk about it too. So that's how I feel. And I think I see more of it too. Mm. They're an activist. Everybody's, a, I feel like everyone I work with is an activist. They want to say something. They want to do something. It's not on a stage. It's much larger. It's very global. And we are all on the same page. And it's just, to me, it's, it's, things are going to get better, I think, because of that passion we feel towards art, I think. Mm -hmm. so, that's it. so you see a clear um, position on its take. And it's true that argument or everything is political, which also is true, mm -hmm. but it means or it, it devalues art that is clearly political because we yeah. say, oh, it doesn't really matter if you do say it or not, or everything is, which in a way, so but in the very big picture, um, it is not. Um, do you feel, um, that it has made a difference at your university, for example, to say that we are not your place and we don't go for the Broadway plays where we say, we, you know, we put up a, um, a how to succeed in show business without trying others, you know, where you also involve people and you create a beautiful piece of work. You say, no, we have readings with artists from around the world and we have work in progress. Does it really have an impact? So let, for, to be really honest, um, for some people who might be listening, where does our university, where should we be going if they have spaces like you around the country? Is it working what you do? Uh, I don't see a big impact. I don't see that the world is changing or people habit of liking Broadway or all that. No, I don't think the impact that I would love to have is just like Chekhov says, I think, like Uncle Wanya at the end of, I think the, it's so baby steps what we are doing. Maybe we'll see the results of it 50, 60 years later. No, I am not changing the group of people or anything, but one student, let's say I am, I am for me, I am changing. To me is the most important thing. I have a, the, the whole life, the impact on me. But also if I reach out to one student is affected by what they see, what we do, or a couple of students, that is to me the impact. But in a larger sense, I think it's gonna take hundreds of years of change. But I just, just wanna say, as I am on the deathbed, I say, oh, I tried to do the right thing for me. So, but the college is of course sportive, but you know, they will go to Broadway show rather than coming to Rough Draft. I mean, it has been like that, but, but I understand that. I, I am okay with it. So I'm trying to reach that one person. I think one person impacting life of a one person is, is good. Am I being put too awake or put? Am I? So, no, no, it's so, good. so good to yeah. hear. That's an honest, yeah. um, uh, honest answer about what do we yeah. do with the yeah. resources we have, the time and energy. And um, do, you, um, do you feel the fact that you are at a university, does that affect um, um, the work you select? Or if let's say you would be at another place in a center or run your own company in New York City, is there something that makes it different what you present? 
Uh, LaGuardia, I mean, I should say that, I mean, from Stephen Hitt, he is the managing director to do, um, uh, she's now a former, uh, Gail Mello was our president, extremely supportive of uh, any controversial subject. So I was very, very uh, privileged to do whatever I wanted. Nobody say that you can do this, you cannot do this. So yes, I think university and being behind it, it is not saying don't do it or like, is it that? Yes, I feel very, very, very lucky with that. I think I always say, uh, I don't wanna be rich. I don't wanna be famous. I wanna be free. And LaGuardia gave us that, not just me. I mean, whatever we do. And I'm really hoping that stays that way. I don't know. Now we are talking about budget cuts. We are talking about things are changing. Are we gonna can stay true to what we want to do? I don't know. But yes, college and faculty where I am, where we, where we were, it, it absolutely gave us lots of platform. So lucky. So lucky with that. Mm, yeah, it is interesting that work that let's say in Berlin is done by the Gorky Theater, you know, or uh, Sala Beckett in Spain or uh, Royal Court, others, this kind of international global reach. It is done by university places, you know, yeah. who are kind of the guardians, La Guardian guardians or whatever. Yeah, but, but I think like a guardian. I say, who's going to do it? People losing funding. They, they have to do fundraising and now we still have it. So mm -hmm. someone has to do it. We have the platform. Yeah, if you wouldn't do it, this would not happen. There would be no festival uh, with Raftas or others giving a place for work and development and uh, and um, do it. So do, do you, as you said, you work over years. So you give dramaturgical help to uh, writers or you help in development or what, um, what's the idea where you said, you know, it's being developed or you, is the critique after the reading and then it's, um, you say come back in a year or how, how do you? Uh, it depends on the artist. I mean, the, the the if they need your feedback, if they want you to be there, I I'm perfectly fine telling what I I I think of the piece or the uh, the 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 play. Uh, it is uh, the best part of Raft Raft, I will say, just the first conversation with the artist. You sit in a room and we talk about their ideas. I try to guide them towards the goal, what they want to achieve. And with that, uh, it is a very um, respectful uh, exchange. There's no rules to it. If uh, some artist says, oh, what do you think? Should I do this? I will absolutely tell them, but what, what will I always say? I always talk about the limitations. I never talk about, oh, you have everything. I said, don't forget. We have like three hours. So yeah, it's a um, ongoing discussion with the artists, but I'm very respectful to their, um, and we don't have um, talk back afterwards. They do have talk backs with the, with the audience members, but we don't. But what we have been doing, if something is really good, we want to bring that piece back to LaGuardia. So sometimes we did that, very few incidents, very few times, but we did that bring back. But it's a conversation. It's a very open, ongoing conversation with the artists. And that's the best part of my job, actually, just to mm -hmm. sit and talk. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you mentioned that, you know, Stephen had or, um, and uh, or your president, they support you when there were controversies. Tell us a bit, what were, contro what were controversies? What were problems yet what were difficulties if you can you know what when when was that uh, when we, did it become complicated or dangerous yeah uh, like uh, I will like nudity on stage right so let's say we had this uh, show dra drag show a few years ago so we are on a college campus and you just but we had the nudity you just have to warn the people that's going to be nudity on stage that's fine so that's for instance one thing i just top of my head or uh if if uh, um, yeah i gotta think more about it but like if i want to do a play i'm turkish and i want to we have a kurdish festival coming up 
Kurdish uh, art yeah. festival, mm-hmm. Kurdish art festival, and it is like nobody says, "Oh, this is very political between Turkey and Kurdistan." Like, don't do it. Nobody will say that. Everybody yeah. says, "Oh, let's do a play. Let's do a festival of Kurdish," and I will be the first one to push that forward. You so, would do the festival if, in Ankara, you would be in big trouble, right? Yes, exactly. That's what I am saying. Like, for me to be able to say, that's the that's the, still the beauty in America. We still have that freedom of, I want to do this, and nobody gonna censor or say, oh, you cannot do this because we have trouble with that region mm-hmm. or with that group. So that's the freedom of it. That's the freedom of you. Got, you can bring the groups that shunned by other countries or in Turkey easily say, no, you can't do this here on this platform, and that's okay. To give voice to. To the groups that you will never hear in Turkey, maybe, yeah. So I I, I feel very lucky about that too. Mm-hmm. So what did you learn uh, in those ten years? What you didn't know before? If someone says we are, we might also do this or go in that direction uh, of work, what you do? What did you learn? What is your experience? What What do you know now you didn't know when you started? It's a great question. Um, I think I learned, of course, I learned so many things as a producer, like where to uh, the, 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 to be patient with the process, uh, the protocol and all that, of course. I mean, everybody learns in 10 years of doing. As a person, I learned my shortcomings and my strength with the work. Uh, but what I learned, I think, to be able to say what I really want or what my vision is. I think 10 years gave me the, the ability uh, and the power of say, this is what I want, that's what I'm gonna do. I think 10 years, me as a person and as a producer, I learned that. So I think I'm at the place that I know what I want and I wanna do that way. And with the support from college, from my team, I can do that. But yeah, I learned so many things also, how to deal with artists, where to, you know, pull the block, where to be nice, the budget, all other elements that, 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 that takes time to learn. You wouldn't know unless you do it. Mm. So, you know, you can just be yeah, learning. Um, Constantly. Learning is by doing, or as Brian Eno says, uh, start cooking, recipe will come, you know, or look here or there, but you have to, you have to, um, start cooking. Um, it's a play festival, uh, Rough Draft, and I think also um, Amina is, a, is, on, is focused on plays. Do you see there are forms, whether it's like site-specific or perhaps, you know, the kind of documentary theater forms or others, do you feel um, plays are the things we should focus on or do you uh, feel that there are ensemble works also that um, you 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 see more now done who have a diversity of viewpoints, often not longer one director by two or three. Is there something happening, or do you feel in your work it is it is comes out of place? Uh, for Rafra, what was happening? I think more uh, device work is more. Uh, so uh, that I see more site specific, and also something artists focusing more about the quantity of the audience. So there are so many things uh, geared towards like a place is not for the the whole big crowd, but for one person or a smaller group or site specific pieces in a room or uh, putting everybody on stage or doing things uh, in, it's more like how to reach the audience. I think that is changing. I mean, that's my experience with Draft Draft. People exploring the ways different ways to reach to the audience. That is site specific, I think is becoming more powerful in that sense. And device theater uh, is something I see more and more happening. The voices of like, uh, uh, not just one person, but many others. So yeah, but I will say the audience, how people do theater for, for smaller groups and intimate, much more intimate rather than something you just do it and you're done. You're creating, a, creating an experience, I think. It's more in Raft Raft, I feel like. And uh, more riskier, riskier in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I think it is, it is a, a, such a, a significant um, um, contribution that also in a way reflects truly the city and also um, uh, Queens and, um, yeah. and, um, and uh, what you do or so what you see on the streets, on the campus, somehow if I come to your festival, I also see it, um, see it there, you engage people um, from, from campus students, faculty, and of course outside directors, outside writers who come and uh, take that opportunity. Um, if you had uh, um, additional resources, and I know you said how thankful you are, but uh, what would you do if you, uh, if, like Guardia would say, you know, Handan, uh, as beginner is doing a great job, um, what do you want to do? Is there something where you feel actually this should happen? This is what we need? What, what we would be passionate about? What would it be? I think global work. I will be uh, bringing right now for Mina, we are inviting people online and uh, all these play wonderful playwrights, directors, I will make sure people come in physical space, work with students, work with the community. That will be my number one thing, like get the funding and fly people all over the world and just use that for that. I, I complete, I'm a true believer of, because it's my life, I learned that it's just, you gotta be global. You gotta stay global. And if there's a funding for it, go for it. I mean, that will be my thing bringing any of these playwrights to work with students. That's, ex I think it's so crucial, so crucial. Mm. That so residencies, like residencies, long-term residencies of global theater artists. A global theater artists coming the work community in, at and the exchange. Uh, why not go to Palestine, take the, take the, and we, we did that actually at LaGuardia with Bulgaria. We built this global exchange they came here, we, but it's all about, and also we are, Bulgaria is a lucky country, we, we, they're not lucky, I mean, because they don't have a visa issue, but talk about Palestine, it's almost impossible, or Turkey, you gotta like all these, uh, all these hurdles that you gotta overcome, uh, but that will be the, the, yeah, the wonderful thing. I think it's just, even with, for me, I'm listening people doing work globally and I'm saying, wow, there's so little time left to do everything. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Long-term residencies, exchange, taking people go all over. So I love the fact that someone says, oh, I am from Turkey, but I am based in New York. I am like now in Berlin. I love people to be able to be everywhere. And even with pandemic, people still do that. They still exists in a couple of places at the same time. And not same time, but traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that artists or companies are no longer even able to pin them down. Oh, you're Belgium or you're American. I love you know. that though. I have oh, no, I was looking at yeah. Amal, one of the playwrights. I said, where was he from? He's in Egypt right now. He was in Berlin. So I, oh, Jordan. So I was like trying to get the pin down where he was from. It's amazing to me. I love it. I love that. Mm -hmm. So like music travels and people listen to world music, how influence play in different countries. Yeah, yeah. and also I think it's a good answer to, uh, um, if someone said uh, the decolonizing uh, should happen on a planetary scale. We shouldn't think just about America. Oh, no. In our groups, you know, who suffered more? Is it the African-American? Is it the Latino? Is it uh, Asian-American? And there are, of course, differences and they are there. But what is the question, you know? And the question yeah. is perhaps, you know, it's uh, on the planet in mind that the big shift that has also happened mm -hmm. is that we have to think uh, about the planet, not ecologically, and the plants, animals, what do robots mean or not? You know, humans playing robots, robots playing humans. But the idea of that decolonization or, you know, the dominant, uh, as we Americans all say, the white supremacy or the supremacy of you know, Catholic or Protestant religion also, you know, others in some places or Muslim or Buddhist, Hindu and others, you know, so we have to see uh, uh, our work in a planetary scale towards um, towards a healing and towards uh, creating a better world and leaving a better world for next generation to come. And at the moment, it really doesn't look good. We are not doing a good job. We do not leave a planet. Um, 
that's as intact and uh, as it is uh, before. And as people do say, it's a lot of damage is irreversible. And the current administration, lots of things can be adjusted, redone, two more judges appointed to the Supreme Court. But the ecological disasters we are experiencing, um, that is real. Yeah. And, the, and there's Bruno Latour and others, uh, Frédéric was on the program said, perhaps this is just a rehearsal. Um, for that things to come and we cannot screw this up. We have to change mm -hmm. and leader has to be part of it, but there has to be as something what you do in your place at LaGuardia with a limited means. It's not a private college. I know how it is. You know, it's a, oh. a public college. It's very limited. But even if you have this space, um, that still doesn't mean uh, you can do things. Someone said opera, only war is more expensive than opera and theater, you know, but I think that's what we should be doing. We should not do wars. We yeah, should, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and create and, and do arts. So for you, um, as a, as a, as a artist, curator, producer, what inspires you? Who are artists or people, also curators or people you admire? Who matter to you? What are your points of references in your system of thinking? Uh, I'm inspired by artists a lot. Uh, I'm inspired by you, right? Uh, well, like, thank you. No, but who I, artists? Say some names. Who do you, uh, who, who uh, do you look up to? Um, I, you know, I'm just like frozen right now. So, uh, yeah, I am inspired by, by, uh, people who is, I will say people, I will say people, I'm not going to say a name, uh, people that who I admire that there is a strong belief that they can make a change, they go out, uh, they do protests, or, you know, people, uh, uh, when we were in safe space in our homes, like, uh, first responders. I know I'm, I, I don't know where I'm going here, but no, yeah, no. I think I admire the ordinary people who, who are out there and the artists who's able to put work out there. I think I admire the people who can survive through hardship, I think I would say. And I admire people like yourself. I'm not just saying it to bring the world in, in front of us, like we, through the conversations, through the ideas, people who's trying who's trying to do something right with their means, you know, uh, they don't stop. People who don't stop and who just keep doing it, even though maybe the impact is this much or none. I think I admire that. I have respect to that so much more than ever and get up and do stuff. Don't just complain. Um, yeah, I think that a lot. People putting themselves out there out there just, you know, mm. yeah. And there are, of course there are names, but I'm just like, I, I can't keep thinking of Shit's Creek for some reason. I'm like, <laughs> because they entertain me that show. I said, what am I thinking? But no, no, I admire people who just gets up and do it and just not giving up and not excusing themselves and using their, their means, I think. That's what I admire. And I admire during March and April when I was eating uh, from Fresh Drake, that's the food delivery. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, wow, he's out there serving <clears throat> food for me, so. Yeah, no, I think this is a very, very valid and important uh, statement. People who do things, uh, who, who yep. Um, don't give up um, and uh, also Florian Malzahar would come on comes on now says you know we have to all keep in mind that also in participatory art just to be a participatory audience member it doesn't mean that you really do something you know or you post something on a, mm -hmm. on a and this is not activism you know this is a placebo actually you should go out right now and uh, and um, and be part of a force uh, that is putting a body into our lives we live in and trying to, to make a change. The great Milo Rao also, who is gonna come with Katya and Carmen talk about his book, Why Theater Matters, you know, is someone who really does that. And who also found ways and models, I think, to, to um, engage with it. the Congo Tribunal, the Moscow trials, uh, his, uh, his uh, work um, in Mosul and in Iraq, and to be really in front of the people they have put down a colonial statue that in, um, 
in, in, in the symbolic way in his theater again. So he's really a provocateur and, and puts um, something out. And I think what you do, that I'm so happy you came to the program is a great example. And um, it is not uh, uh, on Times Square and you will never see it uh, on the billboard. It will not be on the first page of uh, American theater magazine. But um, I think as Mike and Pollan, the food writer said uh, about the silence of the carrots or the silence of the yam, they are really good for you. But you will never see a commercial in this. Exactly. I'm content with it. I'm very happy to be and here. And what you see, the commercial is processed food. Yeah. They, yeah. It comes from a plant, but it's not a plant. But in a way, what yeah. you do is these are plants you are engaging it. And I think it's uh, something that is of significance, of importance, and uh, also in a way, a, a model. And also because it's evolving, you put up new things. So really, yeah. really um, thank you for um, um, for participating and uh, and I think this is a good start and I'm happy. So you were our 100th guest, which is uh, uh, I know, couldn't believe it. Uh, I feel very pre I feel very happy about it. I'm so yes, sorry. you should. You know, it's a lucky you number. Should. It's a lucky number. Yeah, but I'm I sure if you put together how many artists you presented over all those years, you will also be uh, be astonished. Um, so hopefully, you all will be able to. Um, listen in uh, tomorrow to Freya Malsaha, who's also a curator coming from Europe in a way, work what you do. He wrote a book about what is theater and what the, is the political in the theater, what is happening um, in the time we live in, the time that seems to be out of joint, what I answer is, and I think he found some and has some ideas about agonism, or pluralism of agonism and, uh, uh, and it got wonderful uh, 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 thoughts and reflections. And then of course, Mila Rao, who I think um, is a strong force in contemporary theater and to have him with us again is a, is a big, big honor. And Katya and Carmen, who really talked to so many artists about why we need theater and now. So I hope you all will be able to come back tomorrow and on Thursday. Thanks to HowlRound, the and Vijay for, for hosting up Andy at the Seedles. And of course, for you listeners uh, to listen in and, um, and we are, our talks are not about the Broadway stars and the big actors and people like Handan, but they are people who do the work, as she said, people who don't give up, who also in times when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, I think, and Catania said that. So, uh, and she's one of them, so your leader of your director's lab. And so congratulations, this is really important, keep up. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, um, I look forward to the conversation with Abhishek uh, from India, who is a significant uh, theater maker in the world, and you have him at your place. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm it. so excited about it. And the little LaGuardia College is the only thing in the last years. The play company did his work. We did some readings for it, but it's your place that hosts him. So this is a very big deal in our book. So congratulations. Thank you very and, much. Uh, I hope all goes well today. Thanks for taking time out. Thank I know you said your listeners are so you. super busy. But uh, it's a big compliment that you took the time out and all the best and, uh, and uh, stay safe, everybody and the audience members. I hope that there's something in there that also created something. Thoughts are not just in our heads. They actually are real. They have consequences in what we say and what Handan said. So we hope it resonates in some way with you because what she said can be transferred also to our lives to be more global, to listen to experiences that things are works in progress also in our life and to live with difficulties, to this uh, uh, contradictions. And maybe it takes a year or two till you find something like your artist. So there's something of real significance besides the fact that it's theater and performance. And so we gather, we get together in a group and assemble and then talk about life and the meaning of it. So thank you all very, very much. And I hope to, to hear. Uh, thank you very uh, much. Again. So stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.